Hi everyone, in this episode we're going to be working on the response system and we're going to set it up so that you can create responses inside of Unity and dynamically link dialogue objects together. Alright, so let's start by opening up the canvas here and we'll open up the dialog box and in here we're going to create a new empty game object that we will call the response pivot. And so this is essentially the pivot from which the response box will grow. And I'm going to have mine in the top left, so I'm going to go in here. I'm going to do Shift Alt and click right there to get it in the top left. And I'm going to set the width and height to zero. And you'll notice that it's this tiny little uh, object here in the top left. And this is very useful because now we can go right click, create empty, and we can call this one response box and have this one grow from the top left. And so now when I increase the width of the response box, you'll notice it grows to the right. And when I increase the height, it grows upwards. And so I'm going to set mine to 250 by 50, just like that. Then we're going to right click, we're going to go UI and we're going to add an image and we'll call this BG because it's going to serve as the background to the response box. And I'm going to have mine fill out the entire thing. So I'm going to shift alt and click right here. Then inside of the color, I'm going to set mine to be a bit darker just so we can see the difference between the response box and the dialog box. And then we are going to go right click, create empty and add the object that's going to contain the actual responses. So we'll call this responses. And this will also fill up the entire thing. So just same as before, right click, shift alt and click here. Then we're going to add some text here. So we're going to go UI, text and text mesh pro. And we'll call this one option, oops, option template. And I'm going to have the text display option one, just like that. Now inside of the uh, responses object, we're going to add a vertical layout group. So click add component, search for vertical layout group. And then we're going to give it a bit of padding. I'm going to give mine 10 pixels so it aligns with the dialog box. And then I'm going to have mine aligned to the upper center. And I'll also control its width just like that. And if we come in here now and then set the text to the center, the vertical center that is, and then set the vertex color to black, you notice that if I duplicate this, say duplicate it three times, I have three of these uh, option templates that are going to be clickable um, and each of them are 50 pixels tall. And so the way we're going to program it is that each of these are 15 or sorry, 50 pixels in height. And so the response, not this one, the response box is also going to be 150 because 50 times 3 is 150. And just to show you a more dynamic example of how this is going to work, essentially when I increase the height here, you'll notice that the um, text starts to align. And as soon as this guy has the same height as these three accumulated or added together, then we'll have a fitting dialog box. So that's the basic idea. Now, one thing we do need to do is I'll get rid of these. So just delete them. If you <laughs> duplicated them, you didn't need to. And then set this one back to, not this one, the response box back to 50. There we are. So one thing we're going to need to do is we're going to have to add a button to this so it's actually clickable. So we're going to go here, click it, go down here and go add component and then, whoops, button, just like that. And so now it's actually clickable. We're going to add these events programmatically later on. So we're going to leave it empty for now. And so now we have all the setup that we need and we can get programming. All right, so just to have something to work with. I've set up two very simple dialogue objects, one with the text you said no and one with the text you said yes. So go ahead and create those now so you also have something to test with. We're going to pop into a script and we're going to go and create a new C sharp script and we'll call this response and we'll open this up in our text editor. We'll get rid of the default unity methods here and the namespaces. And we also don't need to inherit from mono behavior because this is just going to be a plain C sharp class that we're going to use to store data. 
And so the responses are going to contain the text to show inside of the response box UI and a pointer or a reference to a dialogue object. And these are going to be exposed in the editor. So we're going to make a serialized field, private string response text, and another serialized field called or of type dialog object called dialog object and we'll make a getter for both of them so we'll do private string response text and we'll have this getter return the response text and we'll do private dialog object dialog object which will return the dialog object and this is essentially all this class is going to contain and so what we can do inside of the dialog object is we can create a new serialized field here, which is going to be of type response array called responses. And so we are also going to make a getter for this. So we're going to do private response array responses, and we're going to have this point to the responses just like that. Now you'll notice my IDE here has uh, highlighted these in gray, implying that it doesn't do anything. And it's true, it doesn't, because if we come in here and check out our dialogue object, nothing has changed. And this is because the response class, this one right here, isn't serialized. So if we go into our response class, you'll also see it's gray here. We're going to add a attribute at the top of the class which is system.serializable. And now you'll see that they have the right color. So as programmers, this makes us very happy. And so if we pop back into Unity, you'll see that there is a responses field where it says list is empty. So we're gonna add two responses to this and we're gonna have one that says yes and we're gonna have one that says no. And if we go back into a dialogue object, so we're gonna have the no one reference the no dialogue object and the yes one reference the yes object. So this is text and this is an object. Again, text and object. You can have this one say whatever and it doesn't need to point to a, uh, a object with the same name, but I'm gonna just have mine say no and yes, just like that. And so that's essentially the data setup. And next we're going to build the script or the code to set up the response box and have it grow dynamically as I showed earlier. All right, let's get to work on the response handler. So we're gonna go right click, new C sharp script. We're gonna call this response handler. There we are. Open that up in our text editor. Get rid of these and get rid of these. And we're gonna be using TMP Pro like that. And we're also gonna be using Unity Engine. UI. And so we're going to need a reference to the response box, the template and the container. And so I've just copied those in from my notepad here. And all of them are of type rec transform. This is the box, this is the template and this is the container. And we'll set those up in Unity in just a second. Then we're going to make the main driver method here, which is called show responses. And it takes in a response array called responses just like that and this one is going to have a float that it keeps track of to determine the height of the response box so let's call this response box height and we'll initialize that to zero and then we're going to do a for each we're going to loop through the responses so for each response response in responses gotta love that syntax and then we are gonna go create a new game object, which is going to be called response button. And we're going to instantiate the template inside of the container, just like that. And we can't instantiate the template because it's of type rec transform. So we need to instantiate the game object. Then we are going to do response button dot game object dot set active true and we're going to do response button dot get component tmp text dot text is equal to response dot response text then we're going to do response button dot get component button whoops button there we are and we're going to add a we're going to access the on click 
and we're gonna do add listener and then we're gonna add a listener to a method and we're gonna call that method unpicked response and we're gonna give it the response itself. So let's go ahead and create that method real quick unpicked response and that's gonna take in the response that was chosen. And so what's happening right here is this is essentially a line of code to add a event callback when you click the button. So it's essentially the same like accessing the button inside the engine. If we come into our canvas here and we pop into the template right there, you might've worked with these before. It's essentially the same as adding it manually like this and then going like that and then selecting the method. Uh, we've just done it programmatically instead. So don't do that, don't add that. That's what we've done right here and we've done it programmatically. Then we are going to um, go ahead and increment the height of the response box or rather the float value that keeps track of it with the template dot size delta dot y. And then once it's done, it's going to do response box dot size delta is equal to new vector two response box dot size delta dot x, that's the width and then the response box height. So that's going to set up the height. And finally, it's also going to get enabled. So we'll do response box game object, whoops, game object, set active, true, just like that. And so if we come back into Unity here and we go to the canvas here and we go add component, or actually let me just drag it in instead this time, just for variety's sake. And so we'll have these three fields here. And so the response box is obviously the response box. The template is the option template and the container is this guy, the one called responses. And so now that that's set up, we're going to be working on actually calling the methods from inside of the dialog UI. All right, let's work on the interaction between the dialog UI and the response handler. So if we pop into our dialog UI here and go up to the top, we need to grab a reference to the response handler, just like we did with the typewriter effect. Right, there we are. Then inside of the step through dialog, we don't wanna wait until the user presses the space bar if we have some responses to show to them. And so in order to do that, we need to convert this for each loop into a for loop. So I'm gonna do for int i equals zero while i is less than dialog object dot dialog dot length. And then we're gonna increment by i each iteration just like that and then we're going to do string dialog is equal to dialog object dot dialog at the ith index and then we can essentially just copy and paste this bit of code here right down there and get rid of all of this all right now we just need to check if we're at the very end of the dialog and the way we do that is we say if i is equal to dialog object dot dialog dot length minus one and we say well if there are any responses dialog dot responses is not null and dialog object dot responses dot length is greater than zero then we just want to break out of the for loop but as you can see this is getting awfully long and it's not really immediately apparent what's going on here and so we can definitely improve this very easily by just grabbing this bit of code here, copying it, and then heading into our dialog object. And then we'll make a new getter here of type bool called has responses. And we'll just make it return whether it has any responses and whether those responses um, have a length that is greater than zero. And really, the only reason we need to check if it's greater than zero is because you might end up accidentally creating an array inside of Unity without actually populating it with anything. And in that case, we don't want to show anything to the player because you haven't actually created any responses. And then if we go back to the dialog UI, we can just say dialog object that has responses. And so that's a lot more readable as well. 
Now at the very end here, we are just going to say if dialog object has responses, then we don't want to close the dialog box. We want to say response handler dot show dialog, or sorry, show responses, and we'll pass in the dialog object dot responses. Otherwise, if there aren't any responses to show, well, we know what to do. We just want to close the dialog box like that. And so let's test this out inside of Unity. We'll wait for that to compile and we'll hit play. And after the second one, you'll see the response box pops up. And finally, all we need to do is hook these two up to actually do something when you click them. So let's go ahead and do that now. Now, thankfully, because we've set this up the way we have, this is going to be quite easy. And essentially, all we have to do is we have to go into the response handler here and we have already connected the button click to the method called onPickedResponse. And so when you click it, this method is fired with the response that was clicked, which we pass in right there. And so what we need now is we need to grab a reference to the dialog UI from within the response handler. So let's go ahead and do private dialog UI, dialog UI, and inside of start, we are going to say dialog UI is equal to get component dialog, not dialog object, dialog UI. And so right in here, we simply need to say dialog UI show dialog response dot dialog object. And we also need to hide the response box. So response box dot game object set active false. And finally, we need to also clear out the buttons that we've created up here. And to do that, we just keep track of them inside of a list. So we'll do list of game object, and we'll call this one temporary response buttons. We'll say new list of game objects. And then every time we've created a button, we just want to add them to the list, just like that. And so this is just the list we've created up here. So every time we create a button, we add it to the list. And then we're going to go through the list down here. So we're going to say for each game object button in the temporary response buttons, we're going to just call destroy button. And we're going to clear the list just like that. Okay, so let's pop back into Unity and let's click play. And let's hit enter. And yes, and you can see that it does actually work. And so that's really all it takes. And so you can see it's actually quite easy to just go ahead and add new features without compromising the old design. And that's why we've designed it the way we have up until now. And so I encourage you to go ahead and add more features of your own that fit within your own game. For example, pausing at punctuations. I might also do a video about that in the future if there is a demand for it. But anyway, that's going to do it for me for this time. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, take care.